chapter 2. And I want to begin reading with verse number 1. Amen. Look what the Word of God says. Read along with me. The Bible says, My little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Somebody shout amen. He is the propitiation for our sins. In other words, he paid the price. Somebody shout amen. Somebody look at somebody and say, you, you can't get forgiven without Jesus. Somebody shout amen. You can't get forgiven without his blood. For without the shedding of the blood, there is no remission of sin. Somebody say amen. So Jesus is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only. Look at somebody and say, boy, I'm about to get my bubble burst. It just wasn't for me. It was for the whole world. Somebody shout amen. Now I realize a whole lot of Americans think it's just for us. But it ain't. Somebody slip up your hands and shout, shout it's for the whole world. I got a friend I went to school with. I, I call him a friend. He, we done me wrong one time when I was working at the gas station. It's pouring rain. That was back when it was full surf. It was pouring rain, and he pulled up to get gas, and I went all the way out there in the rain. As soon as I got to his car, he pulled away and laughed. Anyway, he is in, uh, right now, he and his wife and some other folks, family, I guess, are in Bangkok. And that's in Thailand. And you would think sometimes, you would think sometimes when you hear these places like that, that that must be, boy, that must be some kind of place to see or whatever. Must be deserts and all this. and must be, it, he showed pictures. It looks just like Huntington, West Virginia. Somebody say amen. He took pictures of a grocery store. Now, they had pig's feet out in the open that you could buy. And uh, we have to buy them in little jars. But they had pig's feet and they had, uh, what do you call them? Uh, oh, my God, octopus in ice out in the open that you could buy to eat. But to look at it, it just looked. And the people, while they may have been a different color, they may talk a little bit different. They are basically just like us. Somebody, somebody slip up that hand and say, Jesus didn't just die for us. He died for the whole world. Somebody shout amen. Watch this. And hereby, verse number three, hereby we do know that we know him. Now, this, this, is, this is something that I want to give you today. We do know that we know him if. Now, look at somebody and say, there's got to be an if here. If we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar. Well, somebody shout amen. And the truth is not in him. But whosoever keepeth his word, whose word? God's word. Keepeth not, or uh, whoever keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. And he that saith he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk even as he walked. Somebody shout amen. Well, you could be seated if you can. Lord, I just feel this so strong. I just feel this so strong in my spirit today. I'm telling you, the Lord just has burned this in me. We live in a society and in a time where people have become so knowledgeable. Somebody say, man. And if they don't know something, 
they can find out what that is. We had a little problem with, uh, it really wasn't a problem, it was really my fault. But we had a little problem with the ice maker in our refrigerator. And uh, I woke up early one morning and and uh, was supposed to fill up, that was might have been Monday or Tuesday, but I was supposed to fill up the girls' bottles with ice for them to take into school. And I got in there and noticed that there's a big clump, you know, them clumps of ice. And uh, I got worried about that, and I, I pulled that thing out of there, and I was chopping that up, but I must have hit the button. There's a button, on and off button. And when I turned the thing off, and after I got everything cleaned up, went back, and I thought, well, now which one's on and which one's off? And Sam, so help me on the plate there, it says on, off. It shows you on, off. But whoever come up with that idea, what they were really telling you was, this is where the on and off switch is. So I turned the button to where the on was, and next morning we didn't have no ice still. And I got worried about that. Four o'clock in the morning, I got worried about it because Glenda don't have no ice. Man, you know, I have failed as a husband. <laughs> I got so worried at 4 o'clock, I woke up at 4 o'clock in the morning, and I went in there, and I got down on my hands and knees. And, buddy, when I get down on my hands and knees, I'd best be praying because I have to pray at the end of it, help me get up. And usually if I'm down on my hands and knees, you know, or sitting in the floor, I usually got Glenna. She comes by and does the best she can to help me up. And if she gets down, I help her up. There wasn't nobody in there but me, and I was down there sitting on the ground looking way up underneath there, and I thought, well, now I know I got this on. And then I got mad at myself and got mad at Sears. I called Sam the day before. I said, Sam, help me out here. Sam says, well, it's got it, it turn it on. You know, he's deep. Boy, I'll tell you, he's deep. Turn it on. And I got so messed up about that around 4.30 in the morning. And I'd already tried to do it the day before. Looked at the book and everything else. And I went to YouTube. And there was a guy on there. It wasn't the same refrigerator, Sam, but it was the same ice maker. And when he showed up underneath it with the camera, it shows on, off, just shows you where the button is. But on is where the off is. And off is where the on is. Now, I've done figured this thing out. It's got a zero and a negative. Zero is for, or O is for on. Somebody laugh at me, but O could have been for off. So can I get some help here? But I had to watch. I didn't have the knowledge, but I looked this guy up and he showed it. And then he showed now, before you do anything, you have to hit a reset button. <laughs> I was flipping it back and forth, but I had no idea about the reset button. I ain't the most mechanically inclined, but when you want to know something, you can find out what it is. Well, I dare somebody to shout hallelujah. You, you want to you wanna know how to cook anything. You can find some little grandma on YouTube that teach you how to make it. Somebody say amen. I never have made pinwheel candy. My mamma did, but I have no desire to make pinwheel candy because I really didn't like it too good. I like peanut butter candy, and I'm getting good at that. But I never watched mamma make pinwheel candy, but she could do it. But you could go on YouTube, and some bird out of Connecticut that ain't one bit southern to show you how to make pinwheel candy. Well, somebody shout amen. My point is, we have become so knowledgeable that we think in our minds, I'm telling you this, the Lord spoke this to me early this morning. We think in our minds that if we can find out what we need to know. Now, come on. 
what we need to know, what we need to know how to, you know, every, every day there's something on television that will try to get you wrapped up in real estate and try to get you to learn how to buy property and flip it and make money on it. Somebody say man. And it's that what they're trying to show you is what you need to know. Boy, is anybody getting this? What you need to know. I flipped on a thing the other day. This is God's own truth. I flipped on a thing the other day, Glenna, and it said, drink this every night before you go to bed. And you can lose 30 pounds in a month. The next thing I know on my Facebook, every other post was, drink this in the morning. Drank this at noontime. Drank this at nighttime. And every one of them had a different concoction. And if you hit on it, then they wanted, you know, $40, $50 on your debit card to learn what they wanted, you know. And people are doing it by the droves. Because in their mind, they want to know what they think they need to know. Somebody shout hallelujah. Colleges are full of young people and old people that go there, spend thousands and thousands of dollars to find out what they need to know. Doctors go to school for eight years to learn what they need to know. Come on now. Well, I'll go a step further. There are men and women that go to Bible college to see what they need to know. When in reality, it's not what we need to know. It's who we need to know. God, if that don't do nothing for you, then I'm, I'm off base today. Because when that come to my mind, I nearly run off the road has nothing to do with what. Somebody shout amen. But it has everything to do with who. Well, somebody say praise the Lord. Now, you better hear Brother Raven and hear me well today. Watch this. That's where Peter got in trouble. When Jesus told Peter, before the cock crows, you have denied me three times. Somebody shout Amen. On the last time, he looked at a woman and he said, I know him not. God Almighty. Why didn't he say, I've never been around him? You got the wrong man. You got the wrong person. Why was it written, he said, I know him not. That's what got Peter in trouble. In the denial that he even knew him. Somebody shout amen. People have come into a place in 2023. Watch this. 2023 that they feel as though the knowledge that they need is the what they need to know. When in reality, according to the scriptures, the knowledge that we need does not come in what we know, but who we know. God, it's quiet, but I like it. I'd almost get me a chair and sit down. Somebody say, man, it ain't got a thing to do with what. First and foremost, you have to know the who. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Watch this. I wrote this little note this morning. Knowing what you need to know in this sense, will only come, watch now, for the child of God. I'm, I'm preaching to the church today. Somebody shout amen. And I'm preaching to the sinner today because the sinner man thinks, the sinner woman thinks, as long as I've got knowledge or the what, I'll be all right. When in reality, if you really want to know the what, it must come through the who. Because if you know who he is, now somebody shout amen. Now I want to make sure with us apostolic folk here today that when I say we know who he is, I'm not just talking about you know him to be God in the flesh. 
whole lot of folk run around. Watch this now. A whole lot of folk run around, and that's all they teach, and that's all they say, and that's all that they want to shout from the pulpit. I know who he is. But, but, but the writer, John, wrote and said, you don't know him if you don't keep his commandments. You may know a what about him, but you don't know who he is except you keep his commandments. What does that mean to keep his commandments? One through ten or the whole book? God oh, almighty Jesus. Somebody ought to slip up that hand and say he's talking about the whole book. He's not talking about one through ten. Somebody shout amen. He's talking about the whole book from Genesis to Revelation. Everything that God ever said. You'll find that phrase, know him. You'll find that several, several times in the word of God. And most of the times that you find it. Now there's a couple that are talking about you know him like you know Moses or whatever the case is. But, but in most generality, you will find that when it says you know him, you're, it's talking about I know who he is somebody shout amen but the apostle John come by and he said listen Jesus even told the Sadducees and the Pharisees he even told them if if you say you know who Abraham is or Moses then you should know who I am somebody say amen he didn't say if you if you've kept if you've kept the law from Moses kept the law from Abraham, then you ought to know what you need to do. He didn't say that. He said, if you know them, what he's saying, you know them and you keep the law that they kept, but if you knew them, you'd have to know me. But the truth of the matter is, they were trying to do things under the old law when the new law was there. And the new law came and said, it's not just in them 10 things. But he even said, the greatest of commandments is to love you one another. There's a whole lot of folk running around. Can I preach a few minutes? There are a whole lot of folks that are running around right now. And they say, boy, I know him. I've been baptized in his name. And I've been this in his name and that in it. I know him. And they hate their brother. And the Bible plainly says, how can you hate your brother whom you have seen and love God whom you haven't? That's really saying you don't know him. You may know a what. It's about to say praise the Lord. There are a whole lot of folk know a lot about the word and how to keep certain rituals and certain things of the word. It's about to shout amen. But when it comes to knowing him, he said, John said, you better keep his commandments or you do not know him. Well, can I get some help in this building? Somebody ought to slip up that hand and say it's best to know him and then knowing the what will come down the road. Does anybody get this? It's a sad state of affairs. It really is. People are so concerned about knowing certain individuals. I was with people from church, and they, they, have, they have rubbed shoulders with Donald Trump. They have rubbed shoulders. I'm telling you, they rubbed shoulders with Trump. They rubbed shoulders with other politicians in, in certain states and all these other things. And they think, boy, that's really done something. Ladies and gentlemen, you could know Donald Trump personally, but it ain't going to do you a lick of good. It may do something for you if you really get friendly with him and you could put trust in him in, in things of the natural. Somebody shout amen. But when it comes down to the time that you die, it ain't who of this world or what you know of this world. It's who you know that's called Jesus. Yeah, somebody, so they can't teach you that in class. Look at somebody say, they can't teach you that in class. They can't teach you that in a seminar. They can't teach you that in, in certain uh, uh, venues of this world. Can I get somebody to slip up your hands and shout amen? Huh? That's the truth, ain't it? They, they may know the what's. 
They may know the formulas. They may know the thing. But there's doctors that know formulas. There's doctors that know the nervous system up and down. They know every organ of the body. But when you know the who, he created it. God Almighty. That's why when doctors say there's no hope, there is a possibility in this Jesus if you know him. Lord have mercy, God. So somebody ought to look at your neighbor and say, it ain't, it ain't what you know, it's who you know. Somebody say amen. Now the world will take that and they will say, yeah, that's right, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Because if you don't rub shoulders with certain ones of the world, then you ain't never going to be successful. You're never going to be happy. You're never going to have the certain things in life. But I'm telling you right now, I'd rather, I cannot get somebody to lift your hand. I'm telling you, I would rather live a life of loneliness in the natural, but no him well somebody somebody say pray somebody shout hallelujah somebody shout thank you jesus ain't got a thing to do with what you know there are people that they they, they have memorized scriptures from genesis all the way to revelation but when it comes time to really knowing him well can i get some help when it comes to really saying, I, you, you know what? When you say, I know him, that means you have a relationship with him. God Almighty. So, is that, is somebody shout hallelujah. When a husband and a wife come together, the, 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 there are biblical uh, uh, scriptures that talk about they know one another. Now, we take that in our mind as a, as a sexual thing. Somebody say man. But in reality, you become two, become as one, and you know each other. There's things I know about Glenna that nobody else knows. There's things that she knows about me that nobody else knows. Ain't no wonder that Jesus always used the vernacular, he's the groom and we're the bride. <laughs> Somebody lift you up. And you know what he expects out of his bride? He expects his bride to have some knowledge. Somebody shout amen. But the truth of the matter is, the beginning of knowledge is the fear of God. And the fear of God is to know him in such a way that you keep his commandments. You keep his word. You keep everything there is about his word. Somebody shout amen. That means, it goes on down, that if you know him, or you really want to walk with him, then you ought to walk like him. God, I know it's cold in here. I know this ain't, this ain't hanging from the chandelier message, but I'm telling you, if you'll eat this, if people will hear this, it'll change their whole outlook on things. Somebody shout amen. If you love him, you'll know him. If you, if you know him, you'll keep his commandments. And the Bible said, if you, if you say you love him and keep not his commandments, you are a liar. Whew. That's blunt. Raise that. How many how many's ever been around people say they know him, but, but they live like devils? Somebody shout amen. I've never seen such a day and time in all my life how much of the world wants to say they know him and then they live any way that they want to. They don't know him. If they knew him, they'd do the things that he said to do in his word. And they wouldn't try to twist his word so that they could live any way that they want. Well, somebody, somebody shout amen. We understand there are rules. Lift your hand and say there are rules that we must live by. Am I preaching? It's God's honest truth. You can't go into a store, put two candy bars in your pocket, and then walk out without paying for them. There are rules. Raise your hand and say, there's rules. You may get by with it a many a time, but when it says 55, you best be going 55. Amen. There are rules. There are rules. If you miss too much school, you, you become a, a truant. And they can get you for truancy. And if a mother and father just keep them home and let them be truant, they'll come after the mother and the father. Yeah. There are rules. I ain't nobody want to hear me. When the teacher gives homework, there are rules. Yeah. Do it. Don't 
just not do it. Don't just not keep the rules and then get mad when you get a D. God Almighty. When God says, you must put your trust in me. You must put your whole heart and serve me with your whole heart. That's simply saying, that's a commandment. Somebody shout it. Just, just thou shall not steal and thou shall not kill. That's not just the commandment. Everything that proceedeth out of the word of God, out of his mouth, was a commandment. Love ye one another. The golden rule, do good unto others as you would have them to. And people in churches all across this area and, and other states and other places, they're up there preaching right now, yet they hold alts against people. They'll pass them in the store, won't even speak to them. Pass them on the street, not even say nothing to them. Can I get some help here? Try to avoid them. Talk about them, gossip about them. Speak evil of them. Boy, it's good preaching. And then get up and say that they know him. You don't know him. You can't, you can't know him and live like that. And you rest assured. I was coming home early this morning, about 12.30 this morning. I got up to around Prestonsburg. And I'm telling you, I could see it just as plain as the nose on my face. Hey, a lot of people think they can do whatever they want to, but there is a law of God that will come to pass whether I try to pray it off of them or not. And that law is you will reap what you sow. God Almighty, and there ain't a thing nobody can do about it. You can run around, and their people do it, and I've done it. Lord, lay no charge at their feet. We don't want them to have to, but whatever they sow, so shall they reap. That's what the Bible says. Raise your hands. That's what the Bible says. Now, if we, if we want to declare that we know him, then we're going to have to say that's true, not only for them, but for me. God Almighty. That's why every day of our lives we should be walking like him, striving to walk like him, striving to walk like who? He that it is that we say we know. God Almighty. Somebody shout amen. Hey, li listen. They, I had a lady one time, it was Glenn Zaint. I'll never forget this. We had little poodles or we sold poodles for a couple of times and then we had York, Yorkies, Yorkshire Terriers. We had some of the prettiest pups you ever did see out of, uh, out of uh, what was her name? Not Annabelle, but Tinkerbell. What a name for a dog. Tinkerbell, and then we went and bought us a, a male. What was his name? Chad. He was ugly, and he was stupid. But he gave us some good pups. <laughs> Now watch this. We sold them pups, and it was a real blessing to us until the time came we had to sell them, and the kids was going, <laughs> and they'd sit up on the back of the couch, and they'd go, <laughs> right? Because, you know, for six weeks, you loving on, playing with them, smelling that bad breath, and loving kissing all over them and everything else, and then they grow up, and they're like little toddlers, and then you play with them, and this and that, and, everything. and then somebody comes knocking at the door wanting to give you $300. And, and little kids go, you don't need the money. I had one pup left, just one pup left one time. And here come, I believe it was Glenna's aunt, and I had a woman with her. And they knocked on the door, and I was the only one home, Frank. And I opened up the door, and, and they walked in the door and said, we understand you got a pup for sale. I said, we do. And, and they said, well, Glenna said we could have it for $50. I said, well, I don't care what Glenna said. Because you ain't getting it for $50. I'll keep it for $50. No, you're going to give that pup to us for $50. I said, no. I ain't. Well, we're family. I said, no, you're her family. <laughs> Nobody wanted to hear me. 
You think I'm lying? I'm telling you I did. And they, want, they got mad and they wanted that dog for $50. I wouldn't let them have it. Yeah, but we know you. Okay. I got a guitar for sale right now. I've had people try to offer me only a quarter of what it's worth and act like I was a bad person because I wouldn't let them have it. Well, I didn't buy it to give it away. I bought it to make a little money on it. Well, you're a bad person. You're a bad. Do you think Walmart got that milk? For what you get it for. Amen. Somebody shout amen. Sam, there has to be a markup on certain things. People come in the Sears store all the time and say, we know you. Uh -huh. Is that right or not? God. That's the way they do God. God says, here are certain things that has to be done in accordance with you. Watch this now. This ain't the way it is in the flesh but this is the way it is with God God says there are certain things for you to have to have and do for you to even be blessed enough to know me Whew. God almighty we take him for such uh, uh, so much for granted we think he just has to do whatever we tell him to do because we say we know him and we won't do a thing what he tells us to do and the writer says, if you don't do what he says or keep his commandments, you ain't nothing but a liar. Whew. Somebody somebody ought to slip up that hand and pray for Brother Raven. I'm getting some arrows and they, they ain't even viewed it yet. That's a God's own truth. They people are going to be mad over this. But it's the truth. Yeah, but I know him. I've been, I've been baptized in his name. And, and here's a good one. I have his revelation. If you really had revelation, you'd be keeping his commandments. Somebody help me preach here. I have, I have, I have been in church for years and years, and I ain't ashamed of his name. Then why not live like that? I preached Thursday night. I said it when I, when I taught it. I knew, I knew, I told the Lord. I said, Lord, if I, if I, if I teach this, ain't going to get no views. <laughs> over a week ago, the last one before this one, we had over four, almost 500 comments. Huh? Come on now. You know what that one was about, you know. And then I preach on faithfulness, <laughs> and I ain't even got 200 comments. But I don't know why you got to preach on faithfulness. I don't know why it's always about faithfulness with you. Because without faithfulness, that's where the world is right now. I know him, and they, uh, they only live like they know him on Easter. If you can even get them to church on Easter. But they want to run and say, I know him. I don't have to go to church. I don't have to go to church. You know, one of the scriptures in the Bible says, never forsake the assembling of yourselves together. And I'm telling you right now, if anybody wants to argue about this, they'll have to go down the road and argue. I ain't arguing with them. But that means you're supposed to be faithful to the house of God. And if you really know him, it, it ain't a question. It, 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 it is a fact. I want to go to church. Amen. Somebody said, I know people get sick. I know people get uh, uh, in dire straits. I understand all that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people that are well enabled, yeah. that have an attitude of this. I don't have to go to church to serve the Lord. Yeah. Truth of the matter is, if you serve the Lord, you'll want to go to church. Because you know him. Lord, somebody ought to slip up that hand and say, because you know him. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout thank you, Jesus. Mm -mm. <laughs> they want to shout and dance and do all the other things. 
when they get to church, but when it comes down to knowing him. I read nowhere in commandments that it says you got to shout and dance. That's just a byproduct. When you know him, it's when you don't feel like dancing. You don't feel like shouting. You ain't shouted in six months. You ain't danced in six months. But, but you trust him. And, because, and watch this now. Because you have been commanded, Sister Brenda, by the word to put all of your trust, not in man. Amen. God. Somebody slip your hands up and say, if you ever trust a man, you, you might as well get ready because he's going to fall. Amen. Pride cometh before the fall. Somebody shout amen. That I, I, it's somewhere in the book of Isaiah. I tried to find it this morning, but I'll find it. But there, there's a scripture in, 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 I believe it's Isaiah, where, where the devil says, my kingdom is greater than God's kingdom. And I've thought about that for the last few weeks, about where the Bible says, uh, where the devil says, my kingdom is great. And the truth of the matter is, watch this, there ain't nothing the devil has that's greater than God. Yet there are people that love the kingdom of the devil more than they love God's kingdom. Because God's kingdom is this word. And them that have this word associated in their lives or live according to the scripture, Sister Glendine. Somebody shout amen. And that simply means that whatever God says, we'll be obedient to it. And if we are obedient to every commandment that God gives, then we know yeah. God. That, that, I know it sounds a little elementary to some of us, but there are a whole lot of people. They say they know him, but they don't. They say they have a relationship with him, but it ain't a relationship. All it is is an acquaintance. So, well, somebody shout amen. I was, I was in the driver's bureau this week. And I, I don't even know the man's name. I, I, uh, Pew, I think is his name. But he, he's, he won that in the election. He's the head of the driver bureau or the county clerk or whatever. Here he come walking out there. And, and he saw me. And he come up to me. And he was talking to me like he knew me. I mean like he knew me, buddy. And, and I thought, brother, I've heard of you, seen your picture. And I even got a mailer from you, but I don't really know. He talking to me like he knew me. I mean, everything about me. And then he looked at me and said, uh, said uh, uh, what do you do? And I thought to myself, well, if you knew me, you'd know what I do. And I looked him in the eye and I said, well, I'm a full-time pastor. Where at? Over at Belfry. <laughs> you know what he said? What are you doing over here? We're going to have the office open over at Belfry uh, two days, three days a week now. That's something I've instituted. I looked at him. I said, I, I wanted to say, well, if you knew me, you'd know that a pastor over there, but I live over here. Ain't that, well, somebody shout amen. Fuzzy Kazee, uh, sheriff for all them years, every time I'd see him in Food City, whether it be uh, election day or not, seemed like I'd seen him several times in Food City, and he'd run me down, talk to me like he knew exactly who I was. And then, and then within a few minutes, I'd get your vote, don't I? And I'd say, well, I'll, I'll, I'll pray about it or whatever, you know. And he'd look at me and say, what's your name? And I'd tell him my name. Where are you from? And I'd say, well, my people's from over Peterborough. What's your, what's your people's name? And I'd say, Opal Lily Phil. I know Opal. A lot of people, a lot of politicians are good at it. There are a lot of salesmen that are good at it. There are a lot of preachers that are salesmen that are good at it. But you'd be better off never knowing anybody upon this earth but keeping God's commandments and being able to declare, I know him. Somebody ought to slip up your hand and really be able to stand on the fact that you know him. Somebody lift up that hand and say, praise the Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. I come home the other day. I come home the other, uh, well, it was 
during the night. I come home the other night, and the whole driveway was full of writing and scribbling and all this other stuff. And right across the driveway, it said, said, Raven, I love you. I thought, well, my God, Glenn has got out here and wrote on the, on the, the black top, Raven, I love you. Next morning, it was still out there, and, you know, I get, up, I get upset when they write on the, on, but that, that night, I kind of liked it. I thought, well, Glenna being sweet, what in the world would matter with her? So she's done something. Next morning, I, I, I was wanting to find out, and, and I said, who wrote that out there on that? And Amelia said, I did. I said, well, you're in trouble. She said, why? I said, because you don't call me Raven. Ain't nobody want to hear me. Now, if you want to introduce me as Raven to somebody, but even before you speak that name, you introduce me as your what? Grandpa. Somebody, well, somebody shout hallelujah. Emily and Amelia can run to every person they ever come in contact with and say, my grandpa, my grandpa, and they ain't going to know a thing about me. Somebody shout amen. But if they ever get introduced to me, and we become friends. Now they can declare, I know him. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout praise the Lord. Wednesday, I had to go. I fend for myself Wednesday. For some reason, I, oh, they went to Lexington. I had to fend for myself Wednesday before I went on to Huntington. I went down there. I went down there to... Uh, to uh, Ashland, and I thought, where am I going to eat? What am I going to eat? And I, I, I remembered they said they opened up the Golden Corral down there. And so I went down there, and boy, I sat down there, and boy, I was going to eat me a good meal, but it was packed. And I sat sitting there, and I was eating, and I was enjoying my meal all by myself, you know, missing Glenn and the kids. But I was enjoying my meal, and all of a sudden, you know how you feel somebody stare at you. And I was going like this. Yeah. trying to see who it was staring at me and not moving my head. And finally, a voice spoke out and said, you got to be Brother Raven Fields. And I turned around and looked. I said, well, I am. And they told me who they were, and he's a pastor from down there at Salyersville. And then as soon as he told me who he was, I, I recognized him. He's on my Facebook. He's got a church down there, whatever the case is. But to actually say, I know that man, I really don't. Because he's just an acquaintance. Somebody shout amen. I love how people act like they know the Elvis. Can I get some help here? You ever seen somebody like that? I cried when he died. <laughs> what? But I know he liked family. He liked what? Like family? When did he ever come to Thanksgiving dinner? When did you ever call Graceland and get him on the phone? You didn't know him. You were an acquaintance. Somebody shout amen. You viewed him from afar off. 50 men of the sons of the prophets stood afar off to view what Elijah was getting ready to have happen to him. They viewed afar off. But Elijah knew who this God was. Anybody getting this? It's a sad state of an affair when, when Peter walked with him, talked with him, ate with him, saw him do all these miracles, but then when it came time at the crucifixion, he ran and was afar off. And as far off as he was, he still even denied him three times and said, I don't. Know him. Lord, have mercy, God. Somebody shout amen. Slip up that hand and shout hallelujah. Can, can I get some help in this building today? 
I know him. Say it with me. Say, I know him. If you know him, you keep his commandments. If you know him, you keep his word. If you know him, you love him to the point that you trust him with all of your heart. If you know him, you will not, you will not allow anything at all to separate you from him. Somebody slip up that hand and say, thank God I know him. And you know what? Somebody said, well, it's impossible to do that, Brother Ray. It's impossible. Well, in those same writings, John wrote and said, if a man sin, if. Somebody lift your hand and say, if a man sin. Huh? He has an advocate. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, you better be glad if you sin, you know him. Well, somebody lift your hands and say, praise the Lord. Lift up that hand and say, thank you, Jesus. There are judges, they put their signs out there in the church, that little piece of property right there, it's still the churches. They'll come and they'll put their political signs out there, vote for me, vote for me. You, you think if I get in trouble, I could run to them and say, you put a sign in my yard. You, you think that's going to matter? You think I'd be able to look at them and say, I know you. You know what they're going to say? It don't matter. I can't, I can't judge the situation because I know somebody. So somebody say praise the Lord. Man, I tell you, I hope you're getting this today. I went into Walmart the other morning right down the road here. I went into Walmart the other morning. I come out with a buggy, toilet paper, uh, uh, toilet paper and trash bags for the church. On my way out, I seen uh, uh, Nikita's husband. He run over to me, hugged me and everything else. I didn't look at him. I know him, but I didn't look at him and say, uh, uh, hey, give me my money back. You work here. You, you might be a big shot here. It, it, it wouldn't matter to him who he knows. He can't do that. But with God, he said, if you keep my commandments, there ain't a thing I won't do for you. Because you know me. When you really say you know God, it simply means you abide in him. And he abideth in you. God, somebody slip up that hand and say, thank God he's in me. <laughs> Even if I sin, I've got an advocate. He'll go, he'll go plead my case. So, somebody lift your hands and shout hallelujah. Uh, 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 you're, you're right, you're right. We're all susceptible to failure, but we don't have to sin every day of our lives and at every moment. Somebody shout amen, which some people want you to believe that it's impossible for, them, uh, for a man to live without sin. When in reality, if you really know him and keep his commandments, you may make a mistake here and there, but that don't mean every day of your life you're, you're caught in sin. Somebody shout amen. There was a woman, she'd been married all them times, but when she found out who Jesus was, I dare somebody to lift your hands and shout amen. She looked at him at that well, and she, she said, I understand, you're, you're, not, you're not like us. Somebody shout amen. I ain't even, you ain't even supposed to be talking to me. And Jesus looked at her and said those words, said, if you only knew who, the, who I was, the real gift that you would have, you'd never thirst again. What well, she found out who he was, once she found out and had a relationship with him, she ran into the town and told them all, come see this man who can tell you everything there is to tell about you. I know it's not written, I know it's not recording, but I believe with all of my heart that woman left that well and began to live right according to Jesus Christ. Somebody, don't, tell, don't tell me you can't because you can. Somebody shout amen. Don't tell me he won't forgive you for the things that you've done. Don't tell me that he won't forgive you because he can forgive anything except. So I dare somebody shout hallelujah. Whoo, glory to his name. Something to know him. 
just about to say amen. It's a wonderful thing for me to say, I know Glenna. Soon be 40 years. Come April, it'll be 40 years. God. Glad I met her. Glad I dated her. Glad I married her. Glad I've kept her. She's blessed. Family members said when we married, he'll never keep her the way he trades guitars. The way he trades cars, he'll never keep Glenna. Ladies and gentlemen, she ain't no guitar, and she ain't no car. She got about as many miles as my truck's got on her. But I'm going to keep my truck, too, even when the Lord gives me another one. Somebody lift your hand and say, God's going to do that. Somebody lift your hand and say, September coming, October coming. Somebody shout amen. I don't know what you're going to give me. I don't know what I'm going to have. I don't know what we're going to buy, but I'm going to get one. That I don't have to look down and say 477,000 miles. Ain't no wonder I got a blood vessel broke in my eye right now. Glenna looked it up and said, it's caused by stress. Huh? I just keep getting in it and riding. Somebody lift your hand and say, God's able. Don't know, don't know how I'm going to do it. I know Kenny. I know Kenny. Car salesman over at Pops, I know him. But that don't mean he's going to be able to do for me. If, if Kenny gets us one and I buy it off Kenny, it won't be because of Kenny. It'll be because I know him. Somebody ought to lift your hands and say, buddy, this is something. And people are, people are running around saying they know him, won't keep his commandments. They don't know him. People that say they know him, can I, can I have a minute or two more? Say that they know him, but ain't walking like him. Amen. Somebody shout amen. I preached that message last week. I'm telling you, it stuck with me all week long where, 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 where people, people think that they can, you know, uh, oh, I want to see him look upon his face, but they don't want nothing to do with 99 and a half won't do. Am I preaching or not? But if they better get that song and be obedient to 99 and a half won't do. You got to live right to make 100. You got to talk right. You got to walk right. You got to act right. Somebody shout hallelujah to make a hundred. Ninety-nine and a half won't do. Ninety-nine and a half means you've got somewhat of a relationship of being an acquaintance. One hundred means you know him. And you're striving every day of your life. Raise that hand and say, you're striving every day of your life to not only say I know him but I'm walking like him somebody shout amen there was more there was more to him coming I'm closing there was more to him coming upon this earth and walking as a man than just then watch this now his death was the ultimate price but before he died he proved to the devil and for anyone that would love him, Brother Roy, that you could be an overcomer on this earth. Well, he was God, Brother Raven. You said he was, but he was in the flesh. He felt like us. He talked like us. Somebody shout amen. He heard like us. He hungered like us. He thirsted like us. Somebody shout amen. So he actually came to die, but he also, before his death, he wanted to prove, number one, to the enemy, and then to us, that we can overcome. Not because of us, not because of our righteousness, but because of his and the fact that he did. Slip up that hand and say, because he did. Somebody shout amen. 
Somebody say, praise the Lord. We have, we have, we have two byproducts to, uh, today sitting here, two byproducts from watching their granny. One loves to cook. Emily can just about fend for herself, and she can cook. She can find it out. She made homemade Cheez-Its. She can find out just by, she, can make, she makes the best. Sister Glendine, I'm sorry, honey. <laughs> Emily makes the best brownies grandpa's ever ate. She can make brownies. She can bake a cake. Can't she do it, Grandma? She can go to the freezer and get you something. She can put it in. She, she knows how to run the air fryer. She, she's going to be a great cook one day. Now, she's a little messy right now. Look at me, Emily. A little messy. But that's all right because we have another byproduct that wants to clean all the time. Because Amelia grab a broom. <laughs> I'm afraid she's going to bust the TV out. But, boy, she grabs that broom and away she goes. She'll, gra she'll grab, what's now? She'll grab the vacuum cleaner. And, and you know it's bigger than she is. And zoom, 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 away she goes. One of these days, watch this, one of these days. They, I, I've had it once. So I ain't had, had it enough to really compare. But they say Christina can make fried chicken. We ought to just stop by and get us some chicken today and let's see. Byproduct of what they are. Somebody help me preach here. Me and Glenna was looking at bucket steak the other day. You know, cube steak. We was looking at it the other day. Glenna ain't made it in a long time, but that was one of the first meals she ever made after Matt was a young boy. And we could sit down at the table, and the biscuits was hard as bricks. She says it wasn't it was, and the, and the gravy was black as coal. And Matt got ready to say something. I said, shut your mouth. Don't say a word, boy. Eat it. We'll never get this again. <laughs> now, maybe one day this week, I'm going to get some cube steak I probably, get, I probably get chef boyardee pizza that's what christina said she wanted i want you to make some chef boyardee pizza oh, that person. i'm going to eat it because it kept us alive for a long time i'm going to eat it out of respect you got three young it's not much money the, the, the chef boyardee pizza is a good meal, cheap. Somebody say amen. Or a hamburger helper. <laughs> we ain't had no hamburger helper in a long time. Thank God. Preach, Brother Raven. They know because they're around her. Now, if we say we know him, we ought to be having some attributes after him. God, somebody slip up that hand and shout hallelujah. Somebody say amen. I can look at Sam sometimes. I can see his daddy. I'm telling you, I can see his daddy. He was, uh, uh, he, he was with him, lived with him, worked with him. There ain't, there ain't no way in the world some of Jim wasn't going to rub off on him. Now, Jim was prettier than Sam, but, you know. I've said this before, I put a ball cap on and I go out and I see myself in the window of the truck and I think, God Almighty, there's Daddy. I see myself walking sometimes. I go, there he goes. I hear myself say some things sometimes and I think, oh, that's just like him. One of these days I'm going to pull it out, buddy. They wouldn't be happy if you were hung on with a new rope. Some, what? Glenn said, I wouldn't be happy with no rope. That's because she watches gun smoke. We become what we're around. Now, I'm closing with this. If we're as much into the word as most people say they is, they would know him 
and you would know they know him by the fruit that they bear. Lift your hands all over this building. It's not. It is not. I, I didn't even give a title to this, did I? It is not knowing who you know or what you know. It's knowing who you need to know. Somebody shout amen. Say it with me. It's knowing who I need to know. Not what I, not, not what I need to know. But who, because if I know who I need to know, he'll give me the what. Am I right? He'll lead me. He'll guide me. He'll protect me. Somebody say amen. Slip up them hands all over the building. Hallelujah.